I think the importance of programs like Fair Play lies in the fact that you get people with lived experience who have actually experienced racism, not just within like the wider construct of Australia, but within the arts and creative sector or industries. I think that's really important to arm those people with um, updated knowledge so that they can create positive impact in their communities. So we always have to be talking about how we connect people, how we bring everybody along on the journey, what are we doing about it, how are we growing with the times and I think that having things like Fair Play puts it in people's faces, puts it in their, their pathway to remind them that this is what we need to be doing. Don't expect that things will change really quickly, but expect they will change over time. And they'll change over time because of your commitment to people and their commitment to you. My involvement with Fair Play is we were a participant in the second intake in the 2023 cohort. Um, so we've gone through this fantastic program and developed an equity action plan um, with our mentor, Gurkham, which has been really beneficial for us because we're so busy delivering and in the art making part of our business, but we never have the space to sit and think and strategize. Um, we also lack in our team some of the diversity that we talk about, and it's good to have a strategy for how we might bridge that gap and engage with our community and encourage people to become part of our team where we do have gaps. Work on the equity action plan with people is good because it actually gets them to think about all the things that I've had to live with grow, um, as a career, as an artist, a struggling, struggling artist career. And so it's, um, I, but having a policy background allowed me to talk to them in a way that gives them a sense of grounding to do the work that's needed to ensure people from diverse backgrounds are included in, in the structures of, of art making across the board. Despite what we're trying to do with the Equity Action Plan, one of the key areas of concern that I see visibly looking around the room is how do you attract marginalised people into the sector? And I think there's still a, a, a long way to go on that front. Um, I thought it was a great program. It, you know, it's a huge area to cover equity, diversity and inclusion um, through, you know, with an intersectional lens. Um, very complex to navigate. It's really important to have groups to continue advocating and pushing for these for the change to happen that needs to happen because you know we're missing out on a lot by excluding people from culturally diverse First Nations disabled communities like that will make a much richer place for all of us. Being with um, people who are committed to this work um, is is great you know I mean just I've got all sorts of ideas about let's have a you know regular network get-togethers to support one another and share ideas and um, the great things you know to, to, that I've heard about um, have been those people naming their challenges and also some of the tips and tricks of how they've got past them um, and or just little simple ideas of um, ways to create you know better access and also ways to make the most of resources. It is not the mob cultural people responsibility to educate others and tell them how not to be racist or not to discriminate them. This is a work that people should be able to do themselves and be ready before approaching other people speak and we are not numbers and we are not numbers <laughs> <laughs> something to take off the diversity box no <laughs> no, no we are not i think like especially what the with this fair play program it's starting that conversation and building those pathways for not just people in interested organizations but everyone in the community to have that understanding to want to work with people from diverse backgrounds um, and thrive from that as well.